Welcome back to the Code Circus. Today we are going to talk about sets. I think before we dive into the code, I'm going to talk a little bit about what you may have experienced as sets. Uh, the set of all numbers is a set, like um, the uh, real number system, the whole numbers, integers, rationals, reals. Those are sets of numbers. Another set might be all the people who are in a particular grade level. That's a set of students. Or a set might be um, all of the um, all of the eggs in a particular dozen of eggs. That's a set. And the reason I'm using those examples is because the values in the set themselves, the actual values don't change. Um, we can add and remove values, but you can't really, you're not supposed to change the actual values within the set. You're not modifying the values. So a set in Python is kind of unchangeable in that you can't change the actual values, but you can add and remove things from the set. The other thing that's really important about sets is that they're not ordered in any way. Um, if you look at a dozen eggs, there's no particular order to the eggs naturally defined. There's, there's no, um, you know, this has to be the first egg. Or if you look at a grade level of students, there's no particular order of students. They're just there. Uh, we're not ordering those students in any way. Now you could come up with orders for all of them, and that's true of anything in life. You can order it in some way, but in general, a set is not meant to be ordered, and that's the way it is in Python. So let's dive in and take a look at some examples of sets. The first is that uh, the way you declare a set, we use the curly brackets rather than square brackets or parentheses. And we can print them out just like we did any of the other two organizations. So we can print out the set. Um, they are unordered, like I said. You can get the length of the set, though. So we can still use that length command. Just throw that in this print statement. And you can see that there's four items in there. Um, it can hold different data types, apple, banana, cherry, one, two, three, four, five, true, false, true, false. It, you can also mix and match strings, integer, and, bo and Boolean types. And if we were to check the type of it and print out the type, it would say, as expected, that is, it is of the class set. We can also use the constructor like we did before with our other lists. And say set, note we're using parentheses, not the curly cues for this. And there's a set of numbers. And print my set two. So anywhere we use the constructors, it, anytime we use the constructors, whether it's a list, a set, or a tuple, we only use parentheses when we use the constructor. I think personally it's easier to use the assignment because it just reminds you that you're doing a set. You're purposefully doing a set. So that using the curly brackets and using that rather than the constructor to me makes more sense. Um, if you wanted to access values in the set, that's a little bit trickier because we don't have an index to them. We could determine whether or not something is in the set. Print uh, is apple in my set. That'll work and it'll print true, but we can't actually go ahead and um, 
figure out which particular item is in the set. It's kind of like the whole thing or check to see if an item is in the set. You can't really find you know, which, where, where orange is in the set. It doesn't make any sense because sets don't have any order. We can add things to the set though. And use the dot add method. You notice there's, these are all the methods that appear nicely for us. Let's say we add, um, let's add another apple. And now run that and we can print my set. And we can see we now have, um, oh, well, that's interesting, isn't it? See, we did add my apple, but it's still only showing apple once in the set. Well, that's because you can add new items, but it doesn't really keep track of um, an order and the repeat. It doesn't do the duplicate for us, but it did put it at the end of the set. So that's kind of interesting. So let's say instead of apple, let's say um, a nut, because that's a fruit, right? And now we have apple, nut, orange, strawberry, and cherry. So we can see that it just put it into the set. And there was we can't worry about particular where it goes into the set. It just throws it into the set, because again, there's no order to this. Um, we can add elements from one set to another set. So let's say we're going to say my other set. Let's make this one numbers. One, two, three. And we're going to call my set dot update. And we're going to update it with my other set and then we're going to print my set and you can see it threw in one two and three into the set so we put we updated our set with another set of values in fact we can add in any iterable thing into our set we can add in lists, we can add in tuples, it doesn't make a difference. Anything we want to add to our set can be added using this dot update method. We can remove items, but we have to be very specific about it. We can say, um, let me put it above here so we can see it printed out. My set dot remove, but we can't say remove you know, the third item. We have to remove it very specifically. So I'm going to remove apple from the set. And now when we print the set, we can see Apple has been removed from the set. We can't remove the third item for the set. We have to remove specifically what we want to get rid of. Um, another way of removing it is doing something called discard. Be and the, the difference between the two is if we remove it from the list, or excuse me, from the set, and it doesn't exist, we get an error. So if I try to remove, let's say, Apple like um, apples, okay? I get an error. Apples is not in the set. So that causes an error. And we really want to avoid errors. We don't want to end up having an error. So instead of using remove, we have this thing called discard. And if it's not in the set, it just isn't going to do anything. Because apples isn't there. Let me just show you that, that we're not actually getting an error. See, apples isn't there, so discard does nothing. We're just throwing it out. If it happens to be in that list, excuse me, in that set, throw it out, get rid of it. If it's not there, then don't do anything. So that can be useful if you don't know exactly what's in your set and you need to rem just check to see, we wanna make sure it's not in there. We also have the pop method with set, and I know I said it's not ordered, but it does kind of keep track of which item was put in last. So if I do my set.pop and then print, actually let's print 
the value that's popped out. So it's going to take out the value and give us the value. And then if I print my set again, and let's get rid of these other set. Oh, I guess we can leave that in there. We can leave that one. There we go. Don't need some of the extra stuff that we had. So we can see it popped out one. One was the last thing that it believes was put into the set. And then two, three, four, five, six, excuse me, two, three, and then strawberry, apple, and orange are cherry are still left in the set. I can clear a set just by doing dot clear, and that erases the whole thing. I can delete the set. Now this is differently than clearing. Deleting the set will totally delete the variable, so it doesn't exist at all. Clearing a set will produce something called an empty set. So for example, if I take my other set, let's do my other set dot clear, and then print my other set. That's going to give me what's called an empty set. See? It's empty. There's nothing in it. It just says it's a set. If I delete it using the del command, and then try to print it, I'm going to get some problems here. I get a syntax error, because my other set is totally not defined anymore. It's gone. Totally deleted it. Sometimes it's useful if you want to clear out a large memory block, if you were keeping track of a lot of information, and you say, hey, I just want to get rid of this and make sure it's not floating around in memory. Deleting it is, is useful. With all sets, we have some basic uh, set operators that we have used in other situations like math. Uh, let me put, I got my two sets here. The first one I want to look at is what's called a union. And I have to store this in a new set. I, I can't just put this. So I'm just going to say my set 3. I'm going to make that equal to my set dot union my other set. And what this means is if it exists in either set, we're going to put it into the new set. It's not going to count duplicates. If it's, it's only going to put it in one time. So when I go ahead and run this, and I should have printed it out. There we go. So now I've put the two sets together. I've united them. And this is the better way of combining sets into a new set, because it's just the typical set notation. Um, if two sets happen to share some values, so let's say my set three we know has values, uh, we can do what's called the intersection. And the intersection will only tell me the things that are duplicates. So I know that my other set, I'm going to print this. Uh, let's create another set. <laughs> my set four. Just because I don't want to delete what's there. And I'm going to say my set four is equal to the intersection of the two sets. So I type that out. My set four is equal to my set three dot intersection of my other set. So my other set has one, two, three in it. My set four, my set three now has one, two, three, apple, orange, cherry, and strawberry, as we saw that down there. And then the intersection of the two sets is one, two, three. That's what an intersection means. Now we can also do an intersection update where it, it takes the things that are the same in one set and puts them back into um, the current set. Be careful with intersection update. Make sure you're not overwriting sets that you want to keep. So I generally, I kind of stay away from intersection update. But you can do that. 
uh, there is something called a symmetrical difference where you only keep the elements that are not in both sets. So we would do, let's say, let me pick a good set. Uh, let's just do my set four again. And we're going to set that equal to my set three dot symmetrical, oh, symmetric, sorry, difference. my other set and then we'll print out my set four we're just we don't need to do the intersection clean this up a little bit so you can see everything so we got my set is apple orange and cherry we know my other set is one two three my set three is the union of those two sets, so it puts them all together, and then my set four is going to be only the things that are not the same in both sets, which would probably be orange, strawberry, apple, and cherry. There are some other methods that you have within sets. Um, you have uh, add, clear, copy, Difference, difference update, discard, intersection, intersection update is disjoint, which returns whether or not two sets have an intersection or not, is a subset, returns whether or not a set contains this set, is superset, returns whether this set contains a set or not, pop we talked about, remove we talked about, um, and then uh, that's all the methods that we have for sets. So that's your big lesson on sets. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is a more complicated kind of version of a set called a dictionary. I'll see you next time.